Unit 8, Life in the Future. Part A, Reading, page 84. What will life be like in the future? Different people have different answers to this question. Some are pessimistic, while others are optimistic. Things will be much worse than they are nowadays, pessimists say. The whole world will experience a period of economic depression. Many large corporations will be wiped out and millions of jobs will be lost. The security of the earth will be threatened by terrorism as terrorist groups will become more powerful and more dangerous. On the contrary, optimists believe that life will be far better than it is today. We will be living in a much cleaner environment, breathing fresher air and eating healthier foods. We will also be better looked after by a more modern medical system. Domestic chores will no longer be a burden thanks to the inventions of labor-saving devices. For better or worse, it is certain that in the future some things will be very different. Developments in microtechnology, computers, and telecommunication are bound to have a huge influence on various aspects of our lives. Take work, for instance. Robots will do most of the work in factories, so they will be cleaner places for fewer people to work in them. Offices, too, will go electronic with the result that paper will almost completely disappear. More people will work from home on computers linked to a head office. As for travel, it is likely that space shuttle technology will be used in normal air travel, achieving speeds of up to 15,000 kilometers per hour. Cars will still be with us, but instead of petrol, they will run on anything from electricity to methane gas. They will also be fitted with computers to tell us how efficiently we are driving and if there is anything wrong on the road ahead. Whatever we expect from the future, remember that progress has never moved in straight lines, and history is full of unexpected developments. However, we are confident that the future is in our hands, and it is our responsibility to contribute to bettering our own lives. Listen to the interview about people's life expectancy in the future, and do the tasks that follow. Task 1. Decide whether the following statements are true or false. Dr. Davis, a Dutch biologist, is being interviewed about people's life expectancy in the future. Many scientists predict that in the 21st century, people will be living into the incredible age of 130. What do you think about this? Well, I quite agree with them. They have reasons to be confident about that. What are the reasons? In fact, their prediction is based on research and on the fact that the centenarian population is mushrooming as our general health improves. Can you explain this further? A century ago, average life expectancy in Europe was 45. Today, providing we look after ourselves, eat more healthily, cut down on things like butter, alcohol, and cigarettes, we can add nearly 35 years to that figure. So these are the factors that help people live longer? Yes, but the most important factor is the development in medical science. What do you mean? Nobody dies from old age, just from diseases that affect people when they get older. So, scientists are trying to find cures for fatal diseases like cancer and AIDS? Right. Nowadays, about 50% of cancers are curable. And I really believe that within 30 years, this will increase to 80%. And in 10 years' time, AIDS will also be brought under control, too. That sounds interesting. What about living forever? So far, eternal life is just science fiction. But with the advance of science, it's not impossible. Part C. Listening. Page 88. 
Listen and repeat. Incredible. Fatal. Centenarian. Eradicated. Life expectancy. Eternal life. Part C. Listening. Page 88. Listen and repeat. Incredible. Fatal. Centenarian. Eradicated. Life expectancy. Eternal life. Part E. Language focus. Page 90. Pronunciation. Read the following phrases. Pay attention to how the full and contracted forms of the auxiliaries are pronounced. I have. I've. You have. You've. He has. He's. She has. She's. It has. It's. I have not. I haven't. You have not. You haven't. He has not. He hasn't. She has not. She hasn't. It has not. It hasn't. Practice reading these sentences. I've got something for you. You've got something for me. We've failed and they've passed. I haven't always lived in this cottage, you know. Haven't you? You've not been here long, of course. I haven't, but I've grown to love it already. He's left, and she's gone to work, too. Hasn't the doctor come yet? No, the doctor hasn't been called. Test Yourself C. Page 93. Listening. Listen to a passage making predictions about the second half of the 21st century. Choose the best answer from the options A, B, or C. The following are predictions about the second half of the 21st century. The world's population will increase from the present 6 billion to 10 billion. Most of this increase will be in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. The Earth's climate will become warmer. This will create major problems for agriculture, and we will see droughts and famine in Africa. We will even see these problems in southern Europe. Attempts to produce an electric vehicle will fail, and we will continue to use our normal cars. In the second half of the 21st century, however, the world's supplies of petroleum will run out. With new technology, people won't need to be in the same place to communicate easily. They'll be able to stay at home and do everything by computer and video phone. Patterns of work may change. People might decide they don't actually need to go to banks, offices, schools, universities, or shops anymore. Test Yourself C. Page 93. Listening. Listen to a passage making predictions about the second half of the 21st century. Choose the best answer from the options A, B, or C. The following are predictions about the second half of the 21st century. The world's population will increase from the present 6 billion to 10 billion. Most of this increase will be in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. The Earth's climate will become warmer. This will create major problems for agriculture, and we will see droughts and famine in Africa. We will even see these problems in southern Europe. 
attempts to produce an electric vehicle will fail, and we'll continue to use our normal cars. In the second half of the 21st century, however, the world's supplies of petroleum will run out. With new technology, people won't need to be in the same place to communicate easily. They'll be able to stay at home and do everything by computer and video phone. Patterns of work may change. People might decide they don't actually need to go to banks, offices, schools, universities, or shops anymore.